Hi everybody, thank you for joining me today. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you the Enchanted Oak Minecraft Studio USB. Of course, there is SVG files along with the content that you get on this USB. But in today's video, I'm gonna be delving into all the fabulous scene building elements, the reflections, the colorways, backgrounds, you name it, that come with those fabulous Minecraft Studio files from Two Red Robins. It's an amazing USB. There's so much content on here to play with. And I'm gonna share with you a project that you can do at home straight away, or of course, use it as inspiration for you to then tailor it into your very own projects and you can make them in any way, shape or form you want to work with. So I'm gonna take you straight through to the USB on the computer and show you basically straight away what you're getting on that USB and then what we can play with it. So you can see straight away on here, I have popped the USB into the computer and we've got our scene building, reflections, digital stamps, backgrounds, and our scenes. So going straight into scene building, you've got your index. Now that will bring up to you all of the archive of that fabulous artwork. You can see here all of the little bits and bobs that you're gonna be using to create your very own stories. You're now in their world. You can create any chapter you want to with this amazing artwork, it's fabulous. But again, it's all broken down into individual PNG files so you can have multi-layering, you can build up with lots of different perspective and scope. I'm gonna share with you as well a few added features that have been built into the scene building folder, especially with the windows and the backgrounds that are created to fit the size of the frame. So you can do nighttime scenes, a morning scene, or any scene that suits your project. So through this folder, we then go straight back into, um, into Enchanted Oak and we go into our reflections. Now, of course, these are gonna match up with your dies. So the dies shared with you in this collection, you can print these off 100% in scale. They will then match and correspond with your dies so you can cut them on your Dacity machines. But then again, you have multiple colorways to play with, but also in that aspect, you can change colorways. Maybe you're wanting to use this maybe with your quirky bird collections or something else and you wanted to make it more of a fairy tale castle um, or an enchanted tree, you could then take the color hues and make it com something completely different. So you can see here, going through, sliding it into all of those different elements gives you a completely different look and feel. You could rainbow it if you wanted, but it gives you loads of scope to play with. Now again, that gives you elements to add further. Now this would be great for something like Halloween, but again, take it into those different genres if you want to. In your files as well, within Enchanted Oak, you've got your digital stamps. So all of the artwork is then relayed into stamp formation. So that gives you the fabulous stamped image of all of the artwork. No detail is ever lost. We never compromise the design to give you that detail. And again, you can color these in. So there's loads here to play with, but of course that's not everything. Again, on here too, you do still have your backgrounds and your scenes. So your scenes are great, of course, for setting a scene. You've got all of the foundation there to lay your images on. But I'm gonna take you through a project, building up a few separate elements on here. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna go into our scenes. Let's stay in this folder. I'm gonna to select to use this one, okay? So we're gonna use this as it is. I'm just gonna widen it ever so slightly, to just, just to slightly widen the image, um, make it slightly narrower, there we go. So now instead of it being A4, I've made it into a bigger card shape, but we can still manipulate the size afterwards. Now in our scene building, this is a very much, I would say, a favorite folder of mine. It's like all of the jigsaw puzzle pieces um, that you want for a project all in one destination. Now the shelving unit here, I'm going to, I'm gonna grab this one and crop it. So we're gonna use it just to crop down that side. There we are. And then if I bring in another one of those shelving units, let's crop it down from the opposite side. There we go. So we've got it like this. Now what we can then do is I'm gonna position one of these at one side and then thinking about my scaling as well at the same time so again i'm just going to scale this one down to the same size there we are and that can sit at this side of the project might even actually make them slightly smaller so i've got more room in the center for other areas of the project now i mentioned earlier about the window having that fabulous concept of it being um, you know a frame that's either well worn or one that they've made from twigs maybe that they've gone on a scavenger hunt for and they've made their own little home now, their own little place, and we're actually going into their world. Everything's usually made from something they've found that the humans have left behind. So with the window, that means you can then put any scene inside here and you can create your very own, which I absolutely love. I think that's a fabulous, fabulous concept um, to have in here. Again, the nighttime scene looks brilliant. So a starry sky at night, maybe they're looking out from that tree. Let's bring that one to the front so you can see there again, completely changes the way it looks and the way it feels. So I'm gonna take this one off for now and have that really nice sort of sunset. I think that one will work really well for this project because all of these color tones I've gone with 
kind of tie into that sepia tone of the background. So I'm just going to scale it down, make sure it's the right size. And then if we group over this, we can actually weld the two of those together. Now that can sit in the centre, but we can dress our window. Now there's loads of added elements on here designed to aid you in dressing the windows or maybe the sets, me making your own little room set with this. I'm actually going to crop the curtain pole. There we are. Bring in one of the curtains this side. Copy and paste it. And then if we flip it horizontally, we can bring that over and pop it this side. So you can see we've now framed the window with the curtain pole. We cropped it off to get rid of that section in the middle. So you've then got a seamless join in between the two of those. And already we've added maybe only five or six elements, but we've created a fabulous scene and one again that will just continue to build in so many different ways. So with this, I'm going to add these little wall lights here. I think these are great. I'm going to put one of those. Let's have a look. Let's put one of them on the actual unit on the shelving unit itself. And then we're going to copy and paste that. So I'm going to bring another one here. So this is true storytelling in its own right. It's allowing you to be so creative. And again, I'm just utilizing the software um, to really aid me through that process. And you'll find yourself doing the same. And it makes it so, so easy to work with. And again, extremely achievable. But this is where you can really have fun. You know, there's no rules. There's no guidelines with a project like this. It really is down to your very own interpretation. We've got the sewing table here. So this is really is gonna be what I would call um, the focal point or the, the centerpiece around the story. So what is the table? What's gonna be happening on here? Of course, it's gonna be sewing. So let's bring it in our fabulous, I mean, this sewing machine is brilliant. It reminds me of one I have now, which was my old grandmother's old sewing machine, her old Singer one that, you know, operated by hand with all the flowers on it. it looks fabulous. So I'm gonna um, put that to this side, scale it down and then pop that on top of the table here. And then we also have a little table lamp. Let's use that too. So we're gonna put that to this side. And again, this is really allowing you to be so, so creative. You know, you really are becoming a designer with something like this. And again, when you create these images, when you create these designs, nobody else has those. You know, you're the only one that owns that particular outcome. Every single one will always be different no matter which way you use it. So let's put the rug just underneath underneath the table there. Let's have a look. So I'm going to sit that just to this side. In fact, what we can do is I'm just going to go reverse back because I just took to the background is if I then sit this right to the back. So we send it to the back and then let's go to order and bring forwards and I'll bring it. So it's actually above the floorboards, but the table is sat on top of it. So it gives the illusion that it is actually placed underneath there. Then we've got some bits and bobs on here. We've got a sewing box. We've got a little tin. Let's put the little sewing tin on the table. Scale that right down and put it here. And then we can start to introduce some characters too to the scene. So let's have a little look through here and see what we want to put in there. There's so many to play with that. I think are absolutely brilliant. I mean, little helpers. She's fabulous sat on the thimble. I think that's a brilliant one to use. Um, so I'm gonna grab a few of these. Thelma, Thelma looks brilliant. Okay, I think Thelma needs to be sat at the side here. So she's on all of the bobbins. And again, I've scaled it up. So now we're inside their house. You know, this is their furniture. This is their little room. So with this in mind, I think then what I'm going to do is I want to find one. Ah, she's sat down. Okay, so Uma's sat down just on here and she's going to be sat against the table. There we go. Put her to this side. And then we want to add some more bits to the table. Let's put this little sewing bag with all of our utensils here and clip that to the edge. So this is you having fun. This is you thinking, right, okay, so is this gonna be a birthday card? Is this gonna be a children's storybook? Is this gonna be the inside chapter to the story I'm telling next? You know, you've got so much scope with these projects. Um, it allows you to be extremely crazy with it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring it in. Let's have a look. We've got a plant somewhere on here that I've seen. So I'm gonna use the potted plant just for a little bit of room dressing. Maybe we could build in the mannequin. I love as well on here. You've got the dress form in, in the form of a mouse. Maybe they're going to be making clothes for the other mice as well. So let's bring the plant to the front. Let's have a look, bring that to the front. And then if we use the crop function, I'm going to actually set it so it's within the frame of our design. So it looks as though it's actually been placed there purposefully. There we are. And then let's see. So what else do I want to add in here? What I'm going to do actually is group all of this together before I do anything else. So group the whole image. And you'll see that when we actually group over a design that we've created, 
when you use the mouse to highlight it all, everything becomes highlighted in sync. Okay, so all of those being highlighted together and then grouping will weld it all. The, the Minecraft Studio now sees that as one individual file, which of course you could print or you could save and you could save it ungrouped as a Minecraft Studio file and then you can go back in and edit it wherever. But this means you can then resize and rescale everything in real time. So for example, with this, you could duplicate it um, as it is and paste. And then I could just take the brightness right down on this image, go to order, send it to the back, slightly enlarge it and straight away for this, we've got a matte layer and this then could be a card. You know, you've not you had to use any black card stock for this and um, straight away, you've got everything you want for this. So that there is making a project simply but effectively, really telling a story um, with Minecraft Studio, but the actual design itself, I mean, look at the detail you can go into with something like this. If I just zoom in here, you can see actually looking around the design, looking around the image of where we've placed everything, the shading just works. You know, you can make your own shadows if you want to on here with the drop shadow function, but using the window with the layering system, with the aperture, it just looks brilliant. And this is just one example of an unlimited amount, almost, should I say, an infinite variety of projects that you can create with Enchanted Oak. So thank you so, so much for joining me here today. I really do hope you've enjoyed the video and it's inspired you to get crafting with Enchanted Oak because I know your projects are going to look absolutely amazing, whether it's paper craft, card making, whether it's going to be home decor, or maybe going to be making something for yourself. So have fun with it, enjoy it. The link will be in the description of the video as well for everything within this. So please do check out the website and have fun crafting. I will see you very soon. If you want to see more from Highlight Crafts, make sure you click the like button. Subscribe by clicking the subscribe button below and click the bell icon to receive notification of all our future content. You can also click here to see our latest video or click here to see more videos like this one.